Hey you guys, it's Brit. Today we're here to go over the most shocking parts of the a and &E, I think it was a 12 part documentary on the secrets of Playboy. I had quite a few thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, guys, before we get into this video, I do need to place a trigger warning right here in the beginning. I'm going to be discussing sexual assault as well as abortion. So if those are upsetting for you, please skip this video. There are many other videos on my channel that you can watch or you can tune in tomorrow. This is just going to be a one-off video. But if you are not in a place where you want to hear about those topics, please skip it. But if you are interested and able, please keep watching. So I had been watching these as they were airing and I was compiling a list of kind of the top crazy things. And then a few days ago, this insider article came out and I'm kind of like cross-referencing as I'm reading this article, I was like, this sounds like a lot of what was on my list. And sure enough, they hit all of the points that I did. So I'm going to be referring to this article throughout the video. I will link it in the description box because obviously I'm not here to just read an article, but I do want to hit on some of the points that they made um, because, yeah, I fully agree with what they are calling shocking. But either way, now if you guys don't know how I kind of discovered the world of Playboy, it was when the show The Girls Next Door was airing on E! I was a huge fan of the show. The way that the show was kind of scripted and produced, it really painted Hef as this... Holly described it really well. They kind of depicted him as this like cheerful grandpa who just so happened to be, you know, having multiple young girlfriends live in his Beverly Hills mansion. He just so happened to have these young girls that lived in his LA sprawling estate that just looked like the coolest house ever. And it, it really is interesting to know how he was depicted in The Girls Next Door versus a lot of the allegations that came out against him in this documentary and also other allegations leading up to this documentary. This is certainly not the first thing that has made it clear that he was not a very good person. I will put it that way. I had actually listened a few months ago to the Call Her Daddy podcast with Holly Madison and Holly talked about their group sex in that podcast and she also talked about it in her book. After the podcast, I did listen to her audiobook. If you guys have not listened to her book or read it, you should if this is of interest to you. It's an amazing book. She's a really good storyteller, especially in the audio version. She does narrate it herself, which I really liked, but she did a great job with the book. And in there, she went into some detail and as well on the Call Her Daddy podcast, she went into detail about what sex with Hef was like. And I think that as interested as some people were, there were equal people that were just gross out. And once I heard some of the details of their bedroom rituals, I felt very disgusted and disturbed by some of the details that came out from Holly. Before we get into the more serious allegations that came out in this docuseries, I just want to say my stance on SA is that I believe people. I believe people. I don't hear their story and automatically call them into question. I was not there. I was not present. So I am never going to be someone who comes and says, oh, well, I don't know if he's telling the truth. I don't know if she's telling the truth. We just don't know. That's just not how I roll. If that is your journey, that is okay. But I am not here to cast doubt on victims who feel empowered or have enough courage to come forth and share their stories. 
One of the very first things that was said by Holly in this um, episode that she was heavily featured in, it was one of the early episodes, it might have been the first or second one, but she talked about how uh, when, when there was group sex happening in Hef's bedroom, he never used protection. And that was something that was echoed not only by Holly, but also from other girlfriends and, you know, people that women that were at the Playboy Mansion who engaged in sexual activities with Hef. There was never any protection involved. Was I surprised by that? Would I call it a bombshell? No, I wouldn't. In fact, that's pretty much what I had expected to hear. But it, it is... It is really crazy to think about all of the years that we're talking about and for him to have been with probably hundreds of women and never use protection. That to me was just, it was gross, but it wasn't, I wouldn't call it a bombshell or anything like that. One of the quotes from Holly from the docuseries she said, there was definitely no romance or seduction or anything like that. It was dark in the room, but there was a giant movie screen of porn in front of the bed. He was in the middle of the bed and then the women were surrounding him. She goes on to say, it was all very mechanical and robotic and you would kind of follow the other women's lead, she added. The impact it had on me was so heavy. I never expected to be the first person to have sex that night or be pushed into it. Over the last year or so specifically, I've really grown to have a lot more respect for Holly. I've grown to be a really big fan of hers. And I came across a clip from Jenny McCarthy's podcast where Kendra was on there and she talked about their bedroom routine with Hef. The way that she talked about Holly, and I know that this is an older podcast episode, but the way that she spoke about Holly in the clip completely grossed me out. And I understand why in the uh, current YouTube videos that Holly is uploading, I understand why she will get a little snarky and a little shady with Kendra. It, it really made my stomach turn. I'll play that for you guys and then we'll kind of move away from Holly and get into some of the other stories. The last thing I wanna say about Holly before we move away from her part in this story is that it was mentioned again and it was a big part of this documentary, the topic of quaaludes. And quaaludes are no longer manufactured. You can no longer get them at a pharmacy or from a doctor or anything like that. But it, during the 70s and 80s, it became a recreational drug and essentially Hef would offer them to the girls because it acted as how he described it, thigh openers. And evidently they were very popular around the mansion. Not only did Hef have his own prescription, but his assistants and other employees at the mansion would have their prescriptions and they would keep track on a calendar of whose turn was it to get the, pres the prescription filled so that there was always a running cycle of quaaludes and a constant supply for him to give to the girls. And one of the things that Holly said was on the first night that she went out, and this was actually in her book too, one of the first nights that she went out with the group, she was offered Quaalude and she denied it. She didn't want to take it. So it was a little crazy to hear how casual this, you know, this was just like a casual, hey, do you want a piece of gum? And it was actually, um, you know, something that was used in order to take advantage of the women that were at the mansion or at the parties or pretty much anywhere in that circle. These were offered as a way to not make them fully aware of their surroundings. And one of the women said that if you took two, it would completely knock you out. And we also have no idea how many women allegedly would have been given these without their knowledge. Some might've taken it knowing, but 
who knows about the other side of that too. One of the other women that were interviewed in this docu-series, her name was PJ, and her title, she was actually a Playboy bunny and a bunny mother from 1972 to 1982, and she made a statement saying, in order to get Playmate of the Year, you had to do some pretty wild things up in the bedroom with Hefner and his friend. The girls did a lot to win that favor, and Hefner knew that they would, so he usually played it up. Sandra Theodore, who dated Hefner from 1976 to 1981, said it in, a, in another interview. And I think that Playmate of the Year was always something that when I was watching The Girls Next Door, I was always very inquisitive of, you know, are, are these women really being picked because they're the, I remember Sarah Underwood when she got Playmate of the Year. In the back of my mind, there was a small part of me that questioned, like, what's really going into making this decision? Is she really just being picked because she's the sweet girl from, you know, your hometown and she l looks like the girl next door because that was a really big thing? Um, but to hear it confirmed, I'm sure was surprising to a lot of other people as well as me. When I heard that, it kind of just like surprised me, but it also confirmed that little piece of doubt that I had in the back of my mind, even back when I was watching The Girls Next Door. Something else that Sandra Theodore said that I found just alarming was that she said that um, Hepner would film people having sex in the Playboy Mansion without their consent. And Obviously, there's so many problems with this. Um, there, There's just a whole list of issues with this. I think that we know the obvious ones. But the problem is, is that when you have photos and videos being taken without someone's consent, and they're under the lock and key of someone like Hugh Hefner, and then he gets old and he dies, what happens to all of those photos? I'll tell you what happened to some of them. Crystal Hefner, who was married to Hef when he died, actually put out a tweet toward the end of this docuseries being aired. And she said that she actually, after Hef had died, she found a lot of these Polaroids that he would take of women. And they were obviously naked and some of them didn't consent to have their photo taken. She found a lot of them and she destroyed them. I'm gonna take her word for it because I don't think that she would have any purpose to hold on to these. So good on her for doing the right thing. But this is the thing is like, you have a monster like Hugh Hefner that has so much power and then women who either feel pressure to consent or they don't consent and they're just wanting to be in, in the presence of this man are literally having photo, video taken of them. They're being pressured to perform sex acts on either him or other people in the mansion. I think the conversation of consent was really highlighted because of this documentary coming out, I thought that it was a really good um, kind of thing that they hit on. I'm glad that people are so aware of consent now because hearing the stories from some of the women that were younger back then and hearing them tell their stories now, it made me feel really good to at least know that they can help add to the conversation because they lived through a time when consent wasn't a big deal. I know that we still have a lot of work to do as a society as far as what consent is and how you get consent, what is consent, what isn't consent, but we are definitely a lot better than back when in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and into the 2000s, when these women were spending time at the Playboy Mansion and allegedly having sex acts filmed and not even know about it. So on the last two episodes, the Shannon twins were on there. And this is where some big shocking things came out. 
And one of the shocking things was that Carissa became pregnant by Hef, which first of all, you know, Holly was there for ages. Obviously, we all know that she wanted to have children, didn't. She moved out. Um, I, I was just surprised to hear that this pregnancy even happened. But I realized that, you know, crazier things have happened. She was so scared that he was going to make her keep it that she went and secretly had an abortion performed. And she said that she felt like if she did keep it, that pregnancy happened as the result of what she considered a rape. And I agree with her. It, you know, none of us were there. So if she says that it was uh, a rape, then that's what I believe. But the way that she had to go undercover to get this done, Hef had watch on all his girlfriends. It was insane. I think that most of us were aware of that. But it was literally like this whole mission that she had to plan out. And the rapper Juicy J is actually the one who helped her take care of this. And I, I love Juicy J. I'm like 3-6 Mafia fan from way back in the day. So when she said that, I was like, oh, whoa, that's crazy. But it was just really sad to hear her talk about this experience and the guilt and the trauma that followed. I, my, my heart you know, broke into a million pieces for her. And you can tell that the Shannon twins are still dealing with a lot of trauma and sadness from their time at the mansion. They both said that they were drinking a lot during their time there. So to hear not only about the sexual trauma, also the fact that Carissa had to go through with this procedure and then you know, be there and the, just the feelings of loneliness and sadness that were already there and then they were amplified because of this procedure. It, it broke my heart for her. And like I said, you can tell that they're both still dealing with a lot of trauma. And I was surprised to see them on this docuseries. I didn't know if they would want to be interviewed or anything like that. But I'm really glad that they were in a position where they could tell their story because I think that hearing from all of these women kind of took us through the decades and it showed a pattern and a progression of who Hef was and how he was the same during the entire time, but some of the acts and his behaviors did worsen as time went on. He became more controlling, more demanding, more entitled. It just, to me, sounded like it was hell on earth to be living there. And at the end of this, I thought about when I was watching the show as it was airing and how fun the mansion looked. It was like an adult Disneyland parties and, you know, uh, getting your hair done and your makeup done and everything was depicted in such a fun, lighthearted manner. But I think that all of us, even, you know, you guys like my age who were young watching the girls next door, I still think that a lot of us in the back of our minds still had some questions, even though it looked like the funnest place that, a, you know, a girl could ever want to live. One thing that Carissa said was every time I've done it with him, it's a salt. To me, it's like he used control mechanisms completely through everything. I'm so happy I had the abortion. So there was a statement at the end of each episode, and it said, the vast majority of allegations have not been the subject of criminal investigations or charges, and they do not constitute proof of guilt. In a previous statement to Insider about the docuseries and subsequent allegations against Hefner, a representative for Playboy said the Hefner family is no longer associated with Playboy and today's Playboy is not Hugh Hefner's Playboy. Directly addressing secrets of Playboy, the statement added, we trust and validate these women and their stories and we strongly support those individuals who have come forward to share their experiences. 
As a brand with sex positivity at its core, we believe safety, security, and accountability are paramount. It also added the most important thing that we can do right now is actively listen and learn from their experiences. Today, our organization is run by a workforce that is more than 80% female, and we will continue to confront any parts of our legacy that do not reflect our values today and build upon and build upon the progress we have made as we evolve as a company so that we can drive positive change for our employees and communities. So have son Cooper put out a tweet before the docuseries came out. He called his father generous in nature and someone who cared deeply for people. These salacious stories are a case study of regret becoming revenge. And I want to talk about that for a second because all of the women had very similar stories and many of them revolved around rape, sexual assault, pressure to perform sexual acts either with Hef or with someone in his entourage in order to get money, if they were trying to become a girlfriend, if they were trying to get in the magazine. So there was a constant bargaining happening and that is something that's echoed from most of the women that shared stories about their experiences with Hef. Now, a lot of people have said, well, why now? Why are these women coming out after the man is dead? And it's almost a way for people to, it's almost like a way for people to be able to call into question whether or not these women are lying and that's not what I'm fucking here for ever. You cannot tell someone when the right time to share their story is. If something happens when you're seven years old and you don't feel comfortable sharing that story until you're 67, that is nobody's concern to call you into question or to say that you're stretching the truth or, oh, it happened so long ago. How do you remember what happened? How do we know that this even happened? I'm not here for that shit. You cannot tell someone when they feel okay or when they should feel okay discussing their trauma. And if this docuseries coming out gave these women the courage to come out with stories, I'm here for it. Sometimes you have to hear one person speak up so that you feel comfortable to speak up. And I have no issue with that. They also discussed the tragic passing of Dorothy Stratton in this episode. I will link a couple of Dorothy Stratton videos in my description box. It's a very, very tragic, but a very interesting story. So I won't go into it here because I already knew about Dorothy Stratton being a, you know, someone who's interested in Playboy and also someone who's very interested in true crime. I had already known about her story, but it was definitely part of this docuseries. So again, I'll link those in my description box in case you guys haven't heard of Dorothy uh, or her story. It's very sad, but very interesting. So the overall gist that I got from this entire series was that you know, Hef was pretty much a very powerful monster who had a lot of protection to preserve his image with the public, making sure that nothing got outside those mansion gates, his girlfriends included. And at this point in time, because of this docuseries, there were a handful of women who felt comfortable enough to band together and share their stories. And I'm here for that all day long. So did you guys watch this docuseries? What did you think about it? What was your kind of top crazy like bombshell revelation that you heard of? Um, and I don't, I don't want to call them bombshells like it's juicy tea because it's not that at all. But it's shocking. Like some of this stuff, if you didn't know about it, it would be purely shocking. And that's why I use the word bombshell. It's not too make something lighthearted or like it's funny or entertaining because it's definitely not that but shocking is definitely um 
a, a word that I would use to describe some parts of this docuseries. So if you guys watched it, leave all your thoughts down below. As always, if you didn't, you can watch it on demand. Um, and if you're not interested in this, then maybe you're interested in the story of Dorothy Stratton. Like I said, I'll leave those down below. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.